Coming up today on News Valdosta, people from across the state rally for justice in the Kendrick Johnson case. The Valdosta Mall has had more than just flash sales this weekend. There were also reports of a flasher. Chris Jones will tell us about this week's weather and Xavier Hall will have a look at the latest sports. News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. The Georgia State NAACP president visited Valdosta this weekend, calling for a further investigation into the death of Kendrick Johnson. I'm Sarah Wall Collins. And I'm Chandler Jackson. Kendrick Johnson supporters are held a rally Saturday at the Lowndes County Judicial Complex. People from all over the state of Georgia could be heard chanting, no justice, no peace, outside of the judicial complex. The president of the Georgia State NAACP, Edward Dubow, attended the rally calling for a federal investigation into the suspicious death of 17-year-old. News Valdosta's Amber Worthy has more on the story. Amber? The first autopsy completed on the body of Kendrick Johnson indicated that his death was an accident and caused by a form of asphyxia. The second autopsy, however, said that his death was non-accidental and caused by blunt force trauma. With these new findings, the NAACP scheduled a rally to tell citizens how they can be involved in the next steps towards justice for KJ and his family. Over the summer, the family had Kendrick's body exhumed and had a second autopsy completed. The findings raised eyebrows immediately and brought about more questions from people all over the nation. Now, we spoke with the president of the VSU chapter about why Kendrick's death was so important. It definitely like this case is something similar to a Trayvon Martin type of thing. When you when something like this happens, you have to jump on it because if we don't, then no one else will. If we wouldn't have said anything, then this case would have been closed and nothing else would have happened. And Kendrick Johnson's voice never would have gotten heard. So. People from all over the state of Georgia rallied because they are still seeking justice. No justice. No justice. No Back in January, Kendrick's body was found in a gym at Lowndes High School. The initial autopsy completed by the state didn't mention anything that would suspect foul play. KJ's parents, however, thought differently. One question still remains with the people who gathered here. What happened to Kendrick Johnson? We will continue to follow this story, and you can follow Justice for KJ on Twitter as well as visit justiceforkj.org. Reporting with News Valdosta, I'm Amber Worthy. 19-year-old Cheyenne Brockington of Douglas will be spared the death penalty, but spend the remainder of his life in prison after pleading guilty to a double murder. Brockington confessed to the shooting of Tasha Stiles and Angela Ortega. The women's bodies were found in February of 2012 near the edge of a pond. Assistant District Attorney John Rupker says Brockington's DNA also is linked to two unsolved rape cases in Coffee County. Brockington has, uh, has pled guilty to one of the rape charges and is expected to enter guilty plea to the second. DeMarquise Elkins has been found guilty by a jury of his peers in, for his role in the murder of a Brunswick baby. The 18-year-old Brunswick teen has been sentenced to life in prison without parole. 15-year-old Dominique Lang is also charged with murder, but will be tried at a later date. The baby's mother testified that she was walking home from the post office with her child in a stroller on the morning of March 21st when a gunman demanded money from her. After the mother told him she didn't have any, the gunman shot her 13-month-old baby in the face. Valdosta police are searching for a man who allegedly exposed himself in the Valdosta Mall parking lot. According to the mall police, a mall security received two different complaints about a 20-year-old white male flashing patrons as they headed to their cars. The incident occurred in the lot near Old Navy and PetSmart between the hours of 5.30 and 6.30, Thursday night. The accused is described as having a medium build and a buzz cut. He is believed to be driving an older blue Jeep chair Key. Police ask anyone with information to contact them immediately. Kira Graham and Chaquel Cook have pled guilty to murdering a soldier in Thomasville. 
Graham, Cook, and two others are all charged, charged with shooting Hassan Williams in the head in July of 2012. Graham received two life sentences for pleading guilty to felony murder, armed robbery, and arson. Williams had been recently discharged from the United States Army when she was killed. Williams and Graham served in the Army together. The other two defendants have yet to go to trial. Dozens of exchange students call Valdosta home every year, but the students expect to be cared for and to have a trusting relationship with their host families. For six Korean exchange students in Swanee, that trust has been broken. A Swanee couple has been charged and arrested with two counts of child molestation and six counts of providing alcohol to minors. The students' ages range from 15 to 18. Police started an investigation after the students complained about it to a school employee. The students reported that Wu Ki Yi and Yan Ju Yi would have gave, gave them alcohol and forced them to play games that involve, stri that involve stripping down naked. Wu and Yan are being held at the Suwannee County Jail without bond. Christopher Davis of Valdosta has been arrested in connection with recent theft attempts. Reporter Stephanie Salone has more. Thanks. But also police have apprehended someone in connection with the recent auto thefts. On September 13th, police responded in reference to a suspicious activity in a parking lot at 100 North 2 Street. Witnesses described a suspicious male trying to break into several vehicles in the parking lot. Police arrived and located a person matching the witness's description. The male ran from the lot but was arrested a short distance away. The male gave officers a false name, but witnesses were able to identify him as the person breaking into those vehicles. Christopher Davis, 20-year-old Barossa resident, has been charged with entering an automobile to commit theft or felony and charged with one count of giving a false name to a law enforcement officer. He is currently in the Lowndes County Jail pending court proceedings. The Barossa Police Department is asking anyone who witnesses any other criminal activity to please call 911 immediately. With News Barossa, I'm Stephanie Salone. Valdosta resident Kenneth Leonard will be spending at least 15 years of his life in prison. Leonard pleaded guilty to two counts of child molestation in late July. He was sentenced to two 20-year sentences in prison Friday morning. Valdosta police say Leonard met his victims while serving as a volunteer at Cross Point Church. Up next on Valdosta News, we'll tell you about the latest city projects and how they might affect your travel plans. You've heard the phrase, don't shoot yourself in the foot, but stay tuned to find out what happened to a man who shot himself in the hand. Chris Jones will give us a look at the upcoming weather, and Xavier Hall will tell us about this week in sports. All this and more when we come back. Stay with us. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. Ooh. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Local firefighters are working with police to solve an arson and robbery case. Valdosta firefighters say that someone robbed an airman's house and then set it on fire. Police and fire officials are investigating a robbery and arson case that took place at Moody Airman's house. Fire officials say flammable liquids were used to start the blaze. By the time the firefighters reached the house, it was almost engulfed in flames. Two handguns, a shotgun, and two TVs were stolen, according to the airmen. No one was home when the fire broke out. Moody officials are asking for donations to help refurbish the home. 
An Albany man who shot himself in the hand is now facing charges. 18-year-old Corey Wright told Albany police that he was wounded when someone in a black grayish truck drove by and shot him. Later at the hospital, Wright admitted to shooting himself. Officers say that they could see the barrel marks on his injury. Wright is charged with making a false statement to police. His condition has not been released yet, but police did say that Wright had to undergo surgery. The city of Valdosta is beginning to install stormwater pipes today on North Lee Street. The installations are being used to help prepare for a new sidewalk project. The new sidewalk will help extend from Jane Street to Volatin Drive. The pipes will be installed on the east and west sides of the street. This part of the project is expected to be completed in October. Motorists should be aware that the project may cause lane closures at times during the project. The project is being funded by SPLOS 6 Revenue. Tomorrow, the city will clean the main sewer line from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. The cleaning will take place at the manhole located at West Central Avenue. This project is to remove any debris that may have settled in the sewer main. Motorists will be affected, but traffic devices will be held in place to direct travelers. Volunteers participated in the second annual The Clock is Ticking 7 Mile Swim on Sunday. The event commemorated the life of James Eunice, a young man who drowned at 17 years old in January 2011. All proceeds going to the James Eunice, all proceeds are going to the James Eunice Charity Fund. John, John Eunice, the father of the deceased, said that the event is a way to give back to the family since the community was so instrumental during the time of James Eunice's death. The swim ranged from one to seven miles at Long Pond in Lake Park. Coming up on News Valdosta, we'll tell you which cities made the list of 100 best places to live in America. And when we come back, Chris Jones will take a look at our upcoming weather. News Valdosta will be right back. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face Pep Talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you free GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to News Valdosta. New firefighting technology was, was available for testing Friday in Albany. Firefighters across Georgia inspected the new equipment at the Albany Civic Center. Vendors at the Georgia Fire Service Conference displayed the new technology. One product exhibited was a turnout suit that protects firefighters from flames. Many of the fire companies at the conference are made up of retired firefighters who develop the technology that is helping to save lives. The Annette Howell Turner Center for the Arts is requesting donations for the Go Green event. They're accepting previously treasured artworks for the Arts Guild Recycled Art Sale. You can receive a tax deduction with your donation. The sales will benefit education in the arts through the programs that the Turner Center provides. Donations will be accepted until September 27th. The city of Valdosta has received several accolades throughout the years, and now it has one more to add to the list. Valdosta is now considered one of the top cities to retire to in the United States. 
In the most recent edition of America's 100 Best Places to Retire, the magazine cites Valdosta's living climate, vibrant downtown, and access to health care, among other reasons the city made the cut. Valdosta is one of four Georgia cities to make it to the list. Among, along with Valdosta, Athens, Savannah, and Brunswick are retirement friendly. And speaking of our hospitable climate, weatherman Chris Jones is here to tell us about this week's forecast. Chris? Thank you, Sarawa. Taking a look at our local weather, we're seeing very warm temperatures again today with a high around 93 degrees. Yeah, it's hot. That's five degrees warmer than the average for this time of year. I keep an umbrella handy as there is a 40% chance of one of those pop-up thunderstorms that we know all too well as a moist parcel of air moves in off the Gulf of Mexico. Relative humidity will be around 70%, which could make it feel pretty sticky outside. Those moderate rain chances will linger into the night with a 30% chance of a rain and a low of around 70. That is 5 degrees warmer than the average with a low of 65. Tomorrow it's the same old song and dance as today with a high around 90 degrees, which is 8 degrees lower than the record of 100 set all the way back in 1927. So there's a silver lining, won't be that hot. As far as rain goes, keep that umbrella handy. There's another 40% chance of rain tomorrow. I promise you can put that umbrella away soon though. The UV index will be very high again at a 9 tomorrow. Be sure to apply plenty of sunscreen, wear a good pair of sunglasses, and limit time outdoors whenever possible. Most importantly, stay hydrated by drinking lots of water. The pollen index is at a medium high, registering at, a, at an 8.4. Look for the pollen count to rise slightly as the week progresses. Ragweed, chinopods, and nettle are the most common pollens. So if you have any trouble with these pollens, be sure to keep around a legal dosage of the allergy medication of your choosing. That's all for your weather today. Back to you ladies in the studio. Thanks, Chris. After the break, Xavier Hall will take a look at sports. Stay with us. Children eat well and move a lot, and move a lot, and move a lot, eat well and move a lot. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Skip a rope Saturday, freeze tag Friday, tap dance Thursday. Children, all the healthy children. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to News Valdosta. We told you last week about several Darton State wrestlers who suffered from heat exhaustion. Now, sadly, one of those wrestlers who was hospitalized for heart exhaustion has died. 20-year-old Ben Richards was pronounced dead Friday evening at 5.30, according to the family. Doctors declared him dead at 10.30 that morning, but kept him on life support until the other family members could arrive to Shands Hospital of Gainesville, Florida. The family is accepting donations to help cover medical expenses. The funeral will be held in Tampa. Let's go to Xavier Hall now for his update on sports. Xavier? Thanks, Sarah. Last weekend in sports was full of both thrills and record-setting drills as our local football teams came together with several big wins. The Valwood Valley has pulled a reverse Vikings from last week by just barely sneaking in a 15-14 win. At home against Memorial Day, Against Memorial Day, a field goal in the last eight seconds proved highly successful, in addition to their greatly improved defense, which kept the Matadors from pulling off the big plays. Proving the readiness of their offense, the Valiants only had one offensive possession in the first quarter, which led to a, defensive fit, a decisive 55-yard touchdown pass. It's only right that after such a nail-biting game, the Valiants will enjoy this week off. Across town, the Wildcats faced off against the Crips Cougar, Cougars 
snatching up a 40 to 6 win in this very lopsided catfight. Reporter Chris Spezia has more. This past Friday night, the Badasso Wildcats improved their record to 3 0 after defeating the Crisp County Cougars 40 to 6. The Cougars struggled to get anything going, who also looked for a 3 0 start to their season. Both of the teams started off slow, but however played excellent defense, keeping the score tied at the end of the first quarter. Valdosta scored first on a 10-yard rushing touchdown by Mac Laddermilk. Valdosta's next possession was followed up by an 8-yard rushing touchdown by Malcolm Joseph to make it 14-0. Right before the half, the Cougars finally got on the board, now trailing 6-14. Uh, I knew that we had to pick the pace up a little bit on offense. We weren't really going as fast as we wanted to. Just try to get the emotions up and get the electricity in there, get the guys start moving a little bit quicker. In the second half, Valdosta played stellar defense and stepped up their offense by finding holes in the Cougar defense, easily running away with the victory. I didn't go in there and scream and holler and, and things like that. I didn't think there was any point in that. Uh, we just talked about cleaning up, you know, and, uh, and, and playing good, clean ball in the, in the second half. And, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it never fails. You know, that's what we talked about going into this night. Those are the things that we were afraid of is, is coming out and playing sloppy and doing those things and we did and uh, you know so we went in and we talked about that at half and uh, you know nobody really screamed and hollered at anybody or anything like that uh, it was just a, about us fixing us. Uh, definitely it's a confidence builder you know each week the more you win the more confidence you get in the team and the offense and you just keep feeling like there's no one who can stop you. They'll be playing Newton right here at 8 o'clock next Friday night. I'm Chris Beziel from News Valdosta. All right, the Cats left Baysmore Stadium with the Hearts of Lions, but they should hold off before breaking out the catnip as they face the lounge clinching Newton Rams this Friday. And finally, the story of the weekend. The Vikings moved mountains in a gasp-inducing win against Windsor Forest this weekend, marching out an 87-0 victory against the, against the Dishonored Knights. Criticism came home last week after their mistake-filled loss but the Vikings undoubtedly showed their, two, their true red and white at Martin Stadium with a series of diverse plays and restless stamina. The Vikings led 24-0 by the end of the first quarter and showed no signs of stopping, not even a little bit as they switched to an almost completely junior varsity team after halftime with a soothing Zen score of 52-0. The Vikings settled down with 432 total yards compared to a humbling 24 yards for the Knights. Last year, Lowndes finished off Windsor with a final score of 38-0. And that's our Sports Weekend in Review. Back to you, ladies. Thanks, Xavier. We'll come back and we'll tell you how local firefighters are making a difference in several young women's lives. And we'll tell you how you can get information on the Affordable Care Act. News Valdosta will be right back. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Can your dog do tricks? Applicants are now being taken for the Heihira Honeybee Dog Show. The dog show will take place Saturday, October 6th, and will consist of three categories. The categories are Best Trick, 
most original costume, and the best duo costume, which will be judged based on both the dog and the dog owner's costume. Entry costs are $2 per category or $5 to participate in all three. Proceeds benefit Bark and Act Animal Rescue. Registration forms can be found online. The Valdosta Lowndes County Chamber of Commerce and the South Georgia Employer Committee will host a panel discussion on the Affordable Care Act compliance re requirements on Wednesday, September 25th. An array of topics will be discussed by experts in the subject matter. Registration is required to attend. The Albany Fire Department donated 60 prom dresses on Friday to young girl vi burn victims across the state of Georgia. The dresses were given to the Georgia Firefighter Burn Foundation. The foundation holds a camp for burn victims every year in Winder where girls 7 to 17 can enjoy a prom that is hosted during the camp. Along with holding the camp, the Burn Foundation supports medical facilities and helps burn survivors along their recovery. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Sarah Wall Collins. And I'm Chandler Jackson. For all of us here at News Valdosta, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.